plaintiff, Lars Osman, met the defendant on the set of a music video shoot, and he immediately started flirting with Lars. Lars claims he and the defendant had a one-night stand, and afterwards, he discovered the defendant stole money from him, so he's suing. Defendant Vincent Forgione is a professional makeup artist who lives a bougie lifestyle, and he insists Lars is the one who hit him up on a dating app. Vincent insists he never stole a dime from Lars and therefore doesn't owe. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Let's start with you. Yeah, I met Vincent on a music video shoot. We were supposed to be, you know, just collaborating, working. Cool. What was your role? I was doing executive producing. It wasn't like a big time music video, but I brought like all the props and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I was doing a little bit of hair and makeup, but he was the makeup person. Okay. So I was doing a little bit with him, but we were supposed to be, you know, working and he was just flirting. With you? Yeah. <laughs> and so I know I started to like him. Um, I let him, you know, come How did over. he flirt? How uh, did he eat on you? He was asking me like where I'm from, and then he asked me my sexual position, and your positions. That's what he would say because he was flirting so hard, like he was just okay. And yeah, what did you do when he's saying that? And we were supposed to be working, so I kept it professional. He asked me like, "Oh, so are you? What are you?" So I just told him. All right. Unfortunately, uh, men, if a gay man hits on them, and now not gay. Yeah. They still get angry. I feel a little uncomfortable when a guy just come right at me, but <laughs> if a guy's hinting around, and then finally I'll, I'll try to discourage that hint, because that ain't my thing, I'm not gay. And so if they keep coming, however, then I'll say, look, I'm not gay, stop this. You're making me uncomfortable. Exactly. And that's it. Some men, what? They want to fight. How dare her, her, her. <laughs> just say no. Yeah, they get mad at themselves because like yeah. internalized homophobia. Oh, so it's like, if I compliment like, for instance, Judge Mathis, like he's a very handsome man. And like, he, if he were to get offended, you know, like people just like, yeah. are always up in arms. I have like, no problem yeah. with that. Yeah. Just don't discriminate. Y'all yeah. should say, treat us like yeah. you treat everybody else. And so other than that, I know that's right. Yeah, that's that's my whole thing. Treat you like everybody. You ain't no different than nobody else. Thank God the LGBTQ plus community do not have to hide it anymore. It's more people who are supportive than who are homophobic. It used to be the other way. Thank God it's going the opposite direction. And I'm glad y'all able to be here. Tonight. All right. So. He was hitting on you and you gave in. That's what it sounds like. That's what <laughs> yeah. you were on your way. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and tell me what happened. It was very unprofessional. Um, so I kept it professional um, until we eventually met on a dating app. Then we were talking for two weeks. Um, and I actually heard from a mutual friend that he was a thief. Uh -oh. And I didn't believe them. But I should have. Uh, but, oh, so you know, before I see you're alleging he stole something from you, but yeah. you had already been told he's a known thief. If other people know it, then you're a known thief. You're a thief, just a regular thief if you steal from each other. But if somebody else know it, that's what you call. He's a known thief. Let me hear from you. Yeah, bring it over to me real quick. Give me some background and then go where yeah. you want to go with it and end up where he just ended. Yeah, I'll give you some background. So I'm a professional makeup artist in Miami. I do makeup for um, influencer shoots, for music videos, um, stuff like that. I live a very like bougie, full send type of lifestyle. So like my full send type of lifestyle, you know, clubs, makeup, hair, Girls, guys, you know, bus, another club, another bus, another club, you know, all the time. So I think um, when I'm presenting myself like this to other people, a lot of people like to see on the inside and see like, oh, like, 
I'm gonna try to like get to him or like I want to be him so bad. So when I'm at, when me and Lars met, I was doing a me, man. I was doing a makeup shoot. Now nah, go ahead, what? I was doing a um, makeup shoot for one of my good friends. She's an influencer and she was coming out with a big new song. So I was like, okay, perfect. I'll do your makeup for it. Cool production. Um, I didn't know Lars yet, but I kind of saw him at the the shoot like working, doing whatever he was doing and stuff like that. And he was always constantly like, kind of like looking at me, kind of like, you know, just like eyeing me down. So I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, we, we started to talk. Get in line. There wasn't that's really- right, get in line. You're yeah. the most popular man, tell them they're knocking on your yeah, door. Yeah, take, take a number, <laughs> take a so, number. Take a number. <laughs> so basically <laughs> I noticed all this, like he's just looking at me and stuff. And then I see a notification on my phone for my dating app. Now, when you get a notification for this gay dating app, it tells you like right away and how far they are from you. So I see that, you know, it's him and he's five feet away from me and he hits me up on the dating app. And before we even had any type of interaction, he's already finding me on the dating app. And I just thought it was really weird, you know, that he found me on the dating app and didn't like come up to me and talk to me like first, you know? So that was kind of weird. And then, yeah, I, there was no, like, really, like, flirting, like, IRL, like, oh, like, what position are you, stuff like that. Like, I feel like that was more done over, like, um, grinder and stuff like that. But, like, I was never really, like, into him like that. And with the stealing and known thief, the girl that said that, she, um, I did work for her and I did steal money from her, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, let me tell you what the case was. So basically it wasn't You can't stealing. be grand and poor at the same time. She, that is economically impossible. You can't be Queen Elizabeth one day and homeless the next. And with the stealing and known thief, the girl that said that I did steal money from her, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, let me tell you what the case was. So basically it wasn't You can't stealing. be grand and poor at the same time. She, that is economically impossible. You can't be Queen Elizabeth one day and homeless the next. Plaintiff Lars Osman says after a one-night stand with the defendant, he discovered the defendant had stolen money from him. So he's suing. Why didn't you steal from her? Well, she didn't really pay me like the full amount for her makeup service that I gave her. So I just thought I would just take it upon myself to just like <laughs> take it from her. Make sure Debbie's uh, fine with her salary. <laughs> y'all ask. <laughs> I know y'all still if you ain't, if you don't get what you want. There is no W2. stuff is right there in the makeup room, so you definitely got that. Matter of fact, She's in your room now. Somebody to get my brief. <laughs> I didn't know y'all do that. Go ahead. Because you weren't paid enough, you said, you, I'm going to help myself to equal pay. Yeah. So I thought it was unfair that she didn't pay me that what I was um, promised to me. But um, at the time, I was like her PA too. So, you know, I was doing bank runs. I was doing, you know, money runs, drug runs, you know, whatever she needed. And... I was, you know, taking a little bit off the top here and there. And I justified it. I thought it was okay because I was just getting my cut. But that situation has nothing to do with this one over here. That's not true. <laughs> nothing if, to if do with it. this case is about stealing yeah. and you've stolen before, mm -hmm. this is very much about that. Uh, it's very relevant evidence. Uh, and what did he steal from you? And well, just give me all, everything about why you're suing him today. Yeah, I... I thought it would be okay to, you know, invite him over. Uh, it did end up, I thought it was gonna turn into like a relationship. I did actually like him at <laughs> first, but I obviously ended that quickly. I knew that he didn't want a relationship, so I was completely fine with that. Um, we actually turned it into a one night stand instead, so I wasn't like mad or anything. Um, but just when he left, my phone was open and it was on the Cash App app and he had sent himself a thousand dollars a couple weeks later i figured out he actually opened up a bank account in my name and took my stimulus check for covid relief and i had to shut down my social security card by calling equifax and how do you know it was him that did all this i actually don't know exactly that it's him but he did say that it was him didn't he have to have the code to your phone to open it and get to your cash app? There's no, there wasn't a code on it at the moment. So it was just free for anybody to use? Anybody yeah. could access There's a code on my in work your phone. phone? Yeah. So anybody, when you set your phone down, anyone has free access to all the content in your phone? 
Well, yeah, it's not like I care about what's on my phone besides I didn't, I wasn't thinking. Okay. And were you knocked out or something? Or yeah. Did he, what, what were you? He knocked you out? I went to bed at 4 a.m. and then he left at 7 a.m. So like I, I was freshly sleeping. My wallet was gone, which had my social security card in it and my ID in it. Oh, That's right. how it was in the moment. Ah, you have to have a little more evidence than this, sir. He has denied every single thing you've said. Yeah. Do you have any communications with him where he admitted? Because that was the biggest convincing evidence or testimony is that he admitted. The communication where he admitted it, he told our mutual friend. That you have no written communication. Do you have anything that can show no evi any evidence? Huh? I mean, on page it's three, fine. on page three, there's a letter from mm -hmm. uh, from Joe Biden about the stimulus check that I was supposed to get from Joe Biden. <laughs> it's it's signed by Joe Biden. Joe Biden. And then there's a president of the United States. Now you, oh, Honor, you thought won, you were grand. I won from, um, <laughs> Be quiet. You thought you were grand. I'm talking to the real grand. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, he get, he talked with the president. You were Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. He's with the president. What did the president she say about it? What did the president say to you? Oh, what um, that was on page three. It was just saying how there's going to be a direct deposit of 1400 And see. But um, I never got that 1400 But this doesn't prove he took it. That's the whole point. There's nothing with his name on it saying that he received a check in his name. There's nothing to indicate he deposited a check that belonged to you. Um, any indication of anything? On page four, they said they couldn't give it to me because it already was deposited. They didn't say he did it. Well, yeah, that's the only evidence I have, I guess. Yeah, and he may have. He got a history of that. However, yeah. you have, you don't have a scintilla of evidence. Even if you had a scintilla of evidence, maybe uh, so combined with the history that he admits to. But he said it was just, he feels it was justified. I just think you should stop leaving your phone open. Besides page one. It's way too easy for people to rob you, honestly. Page one is hardcore evidence that you went through my cash. Yeah, why are you waiting in? Hardcore evidence, $1,000. Plastic Productions. Who is that? Plastic Vincent. That's your stage name? That's my your... cash app. Yeah. And that's my stage name. Yeah. Well, okay. and, um, and like my, all my friends and people that I do their makeup for my clients and stuff, they always okay. call me, um, white well, what plastic. is this showing me? A thousand was sent to him. Yeah. And then on where page... does it say it came from anything associated with you? Um, well, I mean, it's a screenshot of his cash app. He did send me the money. Honestly, he sent me as a, that morning. He was like here, like, or that night, actually, because he wasn't awake. He was like here, like, here's a gift. And he just sent me a thousand dollars. And I was like, thanks for the free thousand dollars. Like, I'm just going to go use it like how I please. So, you know, I did do a little snoop. Is that a gift? Um, the thousand? Yes. No, on page two, I have a like evidence that I tried getting the money back and then they didn't give it to I've me. I've been cause... asking you that for 10 minutes. You just want to floss. <laughs> See that letter sorry, from I Biden? Wanted... <laughs> <laughs> All right, after a recent view of your transfer of funds, we detected the use of Cash App for activity in violation of the Caps Act. As a result, you will no longer be able to ban you from Cash App. You got banned from Cash App. Because I reported a transaction that was like That's made on my own. So why they ban you? I, I, they thought I was scamming them. I was doing, you know, money runs, drug runs, you know, whatever she needed. And I was, you know, taking a little bit off the top here and there. And I justified it. I thought it was okay because I was just getting my cut. But that situation has nothing to do with this one over here. No, that's not true. <laughs> it, nothing it, to do this with it. case is about stealing yeah. and you've stolen before. Mm -hmm. This is very much about that. Uh, very relevant evidence. Plaintiff Lars Osman says after a one-night stand with the defendant, he discovered the defendant had stolen money from him. So he's suing. When you approach him, what has he said? Because I can't determine right now. And We're getting the money back? When I can't determine, I have to dismiss the case. Um, he so. never texted me because he knew it would be used Pardon? as evidence. He never has texted me admitting anything because he knew it would be used as evidence. Just tell me what happened when you approached him about it. He admitted Where's my thousand? You took my 3,100. What has he said? He admitted it. I did a group phone call with our mutual friend that we know so she could like coerce him because he, he's stolen from her before. So I he admitted to it. Yeah, he's admitted so you and the one you and a friend on the phone with you. Yeah, it was and like that a person didn't give me a statement or a letter saying, Judge, I was on the phone. 
No, I don't. That's a very easy piece. Of it's just, it's so funny. I'm, I I honestly think it's so funny how delusional he is because he just like keeps going in circles with this, and it's just he's just so broke now and has so no money at all from, and it's just so funny, you know. Like I mean, even though like I did take your money, it's just like you just can't. You just can't prove it. So you it's just like. You said I took your money. <laughs> just can't. See if you let somebody talk yeah. long. That's why I'm wearing it, letting it go, you go, go. He says, even though I took your money, 3100 is so oh. good. <laughs> That's really funny, bro. You're so funny. You know what? You should use that money to lose some weight, too. Uh, thank you for admitting it. You know what? No, thank you for all of the. I already have 3100, so I don't need any more of your money. You okay. can go use it to go to like SeaWorld or somewhere that like you need to belong to. Okay, I'm well, done. thank you, Judge Mathis, too. That was very nice.